Hello everyone, my name is Alex. This is an episode of a course, How to Learn Java Within 50 Days. Link to the full playlist is in the description below. In this episode specifically, we're going to talk about loops. Now what a loop is, is something that does a specific task for us multiple times. So for example, printing something out in the console down here, uh, like printing hello world, 2,000 times because that would take a load of time just typing by hand even if you would do a copy and paste paste at this say we want to do this 2,000 times it would take quite a bit of time just go through all that and then finally when we run it would just get all these things and and yeah um, and it's really hard to to uh, to locate things in a code that's 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 so big, uh, such a big code uh, that's like 2,000 rows. Really difficult to find stuff in it. It's always nice to, nice to keep your code nice and short so that it's e easy to understand and easy to read. Also, make make sure to comment things. And the way you comment something is by this, and you can just type whatever you'd like to in here. Uh, or you could use the other way of commenting, which is like this. You can type in whatever you'd like to hear. And these are things that will not be compiled with the program when you run it later. Now, I'm going to demonstrate two different kinds of loops or types of loops in this episode. And that's a while loop and the for loops loop. And these are, are the two, I guess you can say, general loops, the two mo most common loops and uh, two most commonly used loops, actually. Um, and you're probably going to use the, the for loop a bit more than the while loop, uh, since the while loop is really simple to do, it goes really fast, and you don't really have to set anything up. But other than that, we'll start with the, with the while loop. Now, in order to get, get a good while loop going that goes for a specific amount of times, uh, what we do is that we first set up two integers, or well, uh, at least one, and I'm going to, to name these count for a counter, and I'm also going to create one for max. So that's going to be the finish. Actually, let's call it finish. So that's the the uh, amount when when it's finished. That's the amount of times uh, amount. Ah, sure. Uh, so Basically, when it finishes, it reaches the amount, and the amount will be 10. The, it, the loop will go 10 times. You can, of course, set this to 2,000, and will go a ton of times. Uh, but we're going to go for 10, stick with 10. And then for the count here, we're going to set that as 0. So it's going to start at 0 and go to 10. Uh, so uh, now, when you create a loop, or well, a while loop, what you type in is while, just like with most of the other other things I've, I've named in these tutorials, or well, in these the series for, and then we do brackets like this, just like in the if statement. It works kind of, kind of the same as the if state, like the if statement, uh, with that you actually check a condition to see if that is true or false in here. Now, what we're going to type in is while, basically saying while, um, as long as count is less than amount then we want to do we want to uh, do a specific task over and over again or we want to use a specific uh, amount of code over and over again and we can do this with squirrely brackets and just kind of get the base here so basically what I will do is that we'll go through this row this line and we'll see is is count less than amount? All right, that's good. Zero, the amount is 10. All right, that's good. The count is less than amount. Then we can go in here, and then we print out all the code that's that's in here. Oh, we're supposed to end. Oh, let's go back and check check the con condition again. Ah, all right, count is less than amount? Yes, it is. All right, let's continue on. We'll just do this over and over again, unless we change the, the count so it's greater than or equal to the amount, then the loop will stop, and we can break out of the loop. 
Uh, or we could just type in break like this. Uh, now we would just go through the loop like that. We'll just we'll just end the program. Doesn't do anything now. Uh, it gets into the loop and then it sees the break here and it skips the loop. It just gets out of it and continues the code like if we had a system out print line down here, we'll just uh, we'll just do that that for us. Uh, so what we can do now is that we could type, for example, system out of print line in here. Hello world. But if we would run this now, we would just get a whole load of messages, and it would cause a ton of lag. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to press the run button because then, then we're going to have to terminate this uh, console. Uh, pretty much straight away uh, we could try it. it would it would look like this and just printing messages over and over again hello world hello world so we just terminate that real quick um, we want it to be we basically want the count to increase every time it goes through a loop so what we do is so we go down two rows we could actually type, type it right here it looks better if we do it here though um, we could do count plus plus to increase the count by one now, what this is going to do is that this is going to make it go 10 times, only 10 times uh, because of the structure on this. Because when it goes, goes through here the first time, the count is going to increment the count. Well, the, <laughs> the count is going to get inc increased by 1, and then the, the count will be equal to 1. The next time it goes through, it will be 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 10 or yeah 10 and it will see oh the count is equal to amount ah no that's not less than amount all right then we're gonna jump out of the loop so we jump out of the loop and we just continue on uh, for the rest of our program and in this case it's ending the program because there's no space down there so if we run this now we're gonna get this message 10 times but in order to see what numbers are actually in this loop we could just do count like this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we could even do it a bit more cooler by using a string and then do plus count. So you could type in count colon and just type something like this. We could talk whatever, type whatever in here. It's just a new string. And then we take that plus the count and we make the string even longer. Uh, so we get count 0, count 1, count 2, all the way up to 9. Uh, and now, the reason to that it starts at 0 here is that it's not we're not increasing it uh, before here. Uh, and, and that's totally fine because um, the loop basically starts at 0, then goes, goes all the way up to 9, where it stops because then at 10 it is, gets equal to, to the amount and it will go out of the loop. Uh, so if we would if we would like this to go from 1 to 10, which is not recommended at all because uh, arrays work from 0 and upward, uh, we would we would like to set this to 1, so it starts at 1, and we'll go to just uh, to 9. Then we would like to change this to an equal sign, so if it's less less than or equal to, it'll only go out of, go out of the loop if the count is greater than amount we get 1 to 10. Uh, that, that's a good thing to know, I guess. And uh, now, now, that's the while loop. Really, really, really useful. We can, of course, type more stuff in here and down here and blah, 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 and have if statements and all these kind of stuff and make really cool things with this. Uh, make cool games, the loops over and over again. You can you can do cool options, uh, options for different things. Uh, now, here, the next loop I'm going to show you, we can just remove everything we have because the for loop takes up a lot less space. That's one of the reasons it, it's really nice to use and it goes really, really fast to, to create a for loop as well. So what we do is that we type in for, just like before, but now inside the for loop we create an integer and we check the value of the, of the int, uh, of the integer, uh, or well, the variable it doesn't have to be an integer specifically, and then we increase it or decrease it or the, do whatever we want to do with it. So what we do is that we create an integer. I'm going to call this i for demonstration for dem demonstration purposes, and I'm going to set this equal to zero. Just created uh, 
create an integer in here, uh, ending it with a semicolon. And then after that, we want to check the condition on the on the i variable. What we do is, as long as i is less than 10, then we want this loop to, to go. Same as before, it's going to go from 0 to 9. Uh, and then we do semicolon again, and we do i++. plus plus. And we use the scrolly brackets to, to get the space here for typing code. So we then we can do, for example, print line, and we can do another count here. But instead we use the i, which was the count var counting variable before. This has the same value. And now we will go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 with the count before. So again, if you want to have this to, to go from 1 to 10, you can just change the integer here. We can set this as less than or equal to 10. It'll go like that. And of course, we could change this like 2,000 if we want to do this a lot of times. We get 2,000. And then think the console is going to, oh, the console actually showed, up, showed all of them. Uh, but we could go with like 200,000. Take a bit to actually type everything out as well. Then it wouldn't wouldn't show all of them, uh, or we could ever even go with some more numbers here. Just take a ton of time just printing them out because my computer isn't faster than that. Uh, but that that's that for loops. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment, favorize, and all that good stuff. And I will be back with more next time. So hopefully I see you there. Bye.